Hello floss tube stitchers. Shelly here at Just Stitching in cold, wintry, bitter, icy Northeast Ohio. So I'm calling floss tube number 79 snow flurries and I'm going to start off by showing you my freebie February starts this week and then I'm going to include a slideshow of all the snowman and snowflake models behind me and also in several other areas of the shop with individual pictures after that i think you enjoyed the valentine one from last week so it's time to do it again plus i didn't have anything new come in this week because three of the distributors that i ordered from were all closed at least one day due to poor weather conditions and icy roads or um, or they were places where they're not used to getting that much snow and don't have enough um, snow plows that sort of thing to get around so anyway all of my orders were delayed so I don't have anything new to show you then at the very end I will uh, tell you the three winners for the week's dye works Valentine threads and I'll tell you what the giveaway is for this week okay here we go uh, Monday, I worked on, um, what's interesting is the, the site calls it Latte Art, but the chart says Latte Heart, and it is both. Here, I'll show you the chart first. Actually, let's see if we can do both at the same time. This is from The World, you know, I keep forgetting, oh, The World in Stitches. I keep forgetting if the word cross is in there. The World in Stitches, I think it's a British site. And so that you can see, it is a heart, but it's to represent the fancy foam designs that baristas can put on the top of your coffee. So what you do is you fill in the brown all the way around the edges until you get as far as you need to go to fill in a hoop or to fill in the top of a coffee mug, which is what I'm going to do. And I, the picture that I showed on Facebook just had a Christmas mug from my um, cupboard, but I did buy a new Ray Dunn mug. So uh, it might be a little bit bigger. I might have to stitch a little more brown, but it's okay. All right, we'll put that. Oh, I didn't decide where I was gonna put that. These. I'll just throw them over there. All right, then day two, I forgot the chart. So I will show you this close-up picture of the finished model. This is hands-on design, Snowman Snow Globe, and it's from the Facebook fan group that Kathy has. And that evening, I was able to get done the snowman and the tree. I'm working it on 16 dwarf from Picture This Plus. And you know, I was fine when I was stewing the snowman. I thought the two strands was covering it very nicely. When I got to the tree, for some reason, the thread just seemed so thick and I didn't really like the way it was looking. So. I'm contemplating taking the tree out and maybe doing the entire rest of the design in just one strand, um, but that might be crazy. <laughs> so maybe in a week or so I'll be over it and I'll go back to stitching the rest of the design with two strands, because whatever. I shouldn't uh, fuss so much about it, right? All right, I'll put that aside. Then the next day, no, wait, let's see, that was Tuesday. Oh yeah, so Wednesday, I had to write it down because two of them are not flat, so I couldn't put them in the stack. All right, so um, the next day I did Love Ya from La Di Da. And what's really funny is when I was looking at the comments earlier today, I saw that April Roberts had commented, have you seen La Di Da's Love Ya? Yeah, I was stitching on it on Wednesday. Um, so I had, you know, my one of my favorite fabrics, the vintage 
Belfast in Stormy Night. So that's a 32 count. I'm using one strand of the recommended colors. Oops, I should have put those up there. Red Pear and Cabbage. Cabbage. <laughs> I've got Stitching with the Housewives on my mind, talking about cabbages. Um, carriage, Carriage Black. So I was hoping to get some of the hearts on that night so you could see some different color, but I just had to stop at a certain time. So that's all I got done there. All right, then on Thursday, I showed Threadwork Primitives Dutch Tulips, and the chart can be found on the Gentle Art website. It uses, I think, four Gentle Art colors. And I had Rita at Snowberry Needle Arts finish it for me. I had no idea what I wanted to do with it, except for some reason I knew, is that watering spout going up my nose? Shelly, watch where you're holding this. Okay, I'm not redoing this. Um, for some reason, because of the colors, I suppose I could have put it with my fall things, but I, I just had this feeling that I didn't want it framed. I wanted something else done with it so I could just pop it in whatever area it looked good in, in the spring, because it doesn't really seem like spring colors to me. So I just told Rita I didn't want it framed and she had full reign. And so she did her famous wool pennies with her um, a little bit of stitching there. And then she used a checked fabric that she ripped and left it um, torn and raggedy on the edges. And she tied it around the back in uh, several places and I just think it's adorable. So that's Dutch Tulips by Threadwork Primitives. All right, and then on Friday, we had um, we had Freebie February plus Friday's Fave Designer. And so I had um, uh, the offer of 20% off of any heart and hand uh, designs that you wanted to order. Oh, let me push this, or pull this around. Here, I'll put it on the bottom so you can see the name of the fabric. I had this snowman fabric in my stash and I happened to think about it. So there's the snowman going upright, but um, here you can see the name of the fabric if you wanted to look for it. I have had it for a few years and I thought it was a really unique color combination. That's why I bought it. I had no you know, preconceived notion of what I was gonna do with it. But anyway, uh, did I already say this is called Christmas Alphabet by Heart and Hand, and it can be found in Candy Cane Stitcher's Facebook group, which is run by Teresa Curry of Needle Bling Designs. And the scale of the snowman is a little large for the design, so I was thinking of cutting a piece of the fabric big enough for a bigger area, a bigger frame maybe, and then mounting this separately, like in the corner, so that you'd see a lot of the snowman fabric around it. Either that or a pillow that, you know, somebody else is gonna make the pillow because I haven't sewn in years, but a pillow where there's a really long area so that you can see a variety of the snowman shapes. So we'll see about that. But that was really quick. It was a one night stitch. And I wanted to just also mention that, I don't know what your opinion is, but I feel like the snowman and the reindeer are such small motifs that I am not putting in the little French knot eyes. It's just too much trouble and I don't think they're, not that I have an issue with French knots, I do pretty well with them. They're just gonna be so close together that sometimes they look cross-eyed if they're not perfectly even, do you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna leave them off. All right, so that was that. And the chart comes, you know, when you print it, it's nice and big and easy to read. All right, and then yesterday, I didn't stitch until later in the evening 
because it was movie night at our house and I never stitch when my husband and I are watching a rented movie. So I picked something small that I could get finished in a short amount of time and I did manage to finish stitching it. This is Bee Honey from Fairy Wool in the Wood and if you go to her fan group on Facebook, it's in the files and there's also a tutorial on finishing the inside of a jar lid. I'm putting mine on a container, but I'm not finishing it quite the same way that she did in the jar lid. But anyway, this is the finished circle. There we go. It's not perfect yet. Um, I did a double running stitch all the way around the edge, and then I did like a big star shape. I think Vanna is the one who shows that in her tutorial. But there's one area of it that for some reason, no matter what I did, it just wasn't pulling taut. I think it's this area right here. So I'm gonna do another running stitch in that area and pull it a little bit tighter before I finish. But I think if I put the uh, like a torn fabric edging around it, it might not be noticeable, so I might try that first. And then, if you saw my Facebook or Instagram post, this is my favorite ice cream, Talenti. This happens to be my favorite flavor, Caramel Cookie Crunch. Mint chocolate chip is a close second. But these are plastic containers with plastic lids that I just told my husband, I need to wash these and save these instead of putting them all in recycling because I think they would be really good for storage. Now, we could use them in our pantry as well, but I started to think about my craft closet and how I have all these things like, you know, buttons and safety pins and whatever, scraps of ribbon. And so I think I'm going to use this in my craft cupboard. So I'm going to glue the bee honey on the top and then either do a raggedy, um, uh, torn fabric edging or maybe um, brick rack or something. So there's, it's slightly smaller than the lid. It actually fits right inside the lid. Like if you wanted to make a pin cushion, um, but then it doesn't screw back on the lid. So it's, it doesn't work the, quite the same way as a mason jar for some reason. Um, I decided it wasn't gonna work as a pin cushion. So anyway, I'm gonna do that. And I thought it was interesting that the color she chose for the words in the B is DMC 3371 instead of black. And so I was looking for one of my bee related fabrics that didn't have any black on it. And so this is what was in my stash. This is my latest purchase in fabric in the bee theme. And I had seen it on Hobby Lobby's website or I had seen somebody show it on a floss tube and I wrote down all the information and my local one had it in stock. So I had no idea what I was gonna do with it. I got a lot. I got a half a yard. Maybe I'll do a bigger pillow on something later. All right, so that was yesterday. And oh, I also wanted to show you, I don't have at one of those fancy machines that will cut out circles for me. So whenever I have to do a circle, um, I have to use one of my scrapbooking tools and then, you know, cut it with a good pair of scissors. But <laughs> I have these pre-cut circles from Hands On Design from her Well-Rounded series. And there's three different sizes. And so the smaller one was just the right size for that lid. So anyway, another reason to buy these, you don't have to be doing that series, but you get these pre-cut circles if you're like me and didn't spend money on that fancy machine. All right, and then today, I stitched a little bit earlier today while I was watching Floss Tube. And um, I'm working on My Big Toes Christmas Snow. And that was her um, two options for stitching, a light colored fabric with Valley Mist from Dinky Dyes. And I didn't carry Dinky Dyes at the time that I had uh, kitted this up. I do now, and so I had that. 
but I had already chosen 32 count antique blue Lugana. And I debated and then I thought, no, you already kitted it this way, so just go ahead and keep going with it. So this is how much I got done. I think this was like an hour and a half of work or something like that. And I had chosen years ago, Dark Shadows, number 175 Water Lilies from Caron Collection. And it has a, a nice variety of blues in it. Um, I don't see it quite so much in the fabric yet. Maybe it would have been more noticeable on a light colored fabric, but I love blue and this antique blue kind of looks like denim to me. So that's what I chose. That was it for my stitching this week. Now I'll do the slideshow and then I'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay.
have a vintage stitch to show you as well as the other snowman models on display. I didn't have this on display, but I did find out recently that the chart is still available. So I'm going to order more and then this will stay at the shop for a while. So this is one of the three designs in Cricut Collections Snow Book. And it's, where's my note? It is book number 165. So anyway, um, it's done on 10 count pewter Tula. And a lot of times Tula is done with pearl cotton, but this is with, I think four strands of floss. So anyway, it was just done as a pillow. Okay. Okay, I'm back with the winners of the Weeks Dye Works Valentine related thread colors. And the first name drawn was Nancy Galuski. And remember that you had to use weeks in your comments somehow. And she said, loving these weeks of freebies. And then the next winner was Maria Enderman. And she said, for weeks and weeks and weeks, pink has been my favorite color. So I thought that was perfect that she was one of the winners. And then the third name drawn was Jenny from Long Dog Stitcher. And she said she was impressed by the number of Valentine models I had on display. And I kind of was too. I had never had them all in the same place before. They were in different places making little vignettes, but it made it easier for me to do the video when I put them all together. So yeah, that was kind of a lot. Um, I guess that means a lot of those were mine or my framers or the stitchers decided not to come get them for Valentine's Day this year. So that's why we had so many on display. Then you noticed in the slideshow that there was uh, Lizzie Kate's Snow Story. So it's made up um, by three different charts. And then on the back, she shows you how to put it together. And so um, one person is going to get all three of these. And I'd like you to just talk about snow. Whether you have it, don't have it, hate it, love it, what you do in the snow, just use snow in your comment. Um, I hope I didn't forget anything because I'm not going to redo this. I needed to do this quickly. I've been here far too long today and I just tried to do this kind of in one shot. So we'll see how I did. See you next week. And don't forget to follow along Facebook or Instagram for my freebie Februaries. And then next week on the very last video I do in February, all of them will be listed in the comments um, so that you have a quick reference. Okay, have a good week. Bye-bye. Oops, I'm back. I forgot to mention that several people had commented on the Dayton sweatshirt that I wore a couple of videos ago. And it's funny, I dress far more casually now that I'm not actually going to church on Sundays. So, um, and it's cold, so I wore a sweatshirt. But my younger niece, Caitlin, went to uh, University of Dayton. So that was for her. And I decided that I didn't want my older niece, Kelsey, to be left out. So today I wore my uh, Miami U sweatshirt and my brother Mark had also gone there. So anyway, had to represent both nieces.